Judicite Dominus, and welcome to question 162 of the Secunda Secunde. The topic for this lecture is pride, and I am Dr. Thibault. So we are finally to uh, the, big, the big one, pride, uh, and it is ironically part of temperance, which is one of the lower of the virtues of the cardinal virtues and uh, theological virtue uh, category of the seven it's the lowest um, but within it is pride um, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise because we just covered humility so in contrast to humility we now have pride uh, and this all falls under modesty which is a part of temperance and temperance moderates the passions so uh, maybe this will all make sense as we unfold this because we have uh, quite a number of articles to cover. So uh, the first article is, is pride a sin? And uh, the answer is not surprisingly yes. Uh, it said pride, which in the Latin is superbia, uh, w which uh, is to aim higher than he is. Um, that's the St. Thomas's definition. Pride is aiming higher than you are. Uh, and if we look to the Latin of pride, the word itself, we have super, which is above, and bia, like omnibus, uh, it's of the people. So it's higher than, the, than other people, higher than the people, uh, is literally the word. Uh, a person is proud because he wishes to appear above what he really is. But I think there's an element, too, of just not only above what he re is, but ab above what other people are, too. It's just above everyone. You know, you think that you're better than everyone, <laughs> in some sense, including yourself, uh, would be pride. And it's opposed to right reason, which is... Uh, all evil is opposed to reason. So because it's opposed to reason... Uh, it's a sin. Now, it's not that you must think little of yourself, uh, as we covered in humility. <coughs> it's to think accurately of oneself is the goal. Right? If you think too little of yourself, that's not good. If you think too much of yourself, that's not good. So the proper median then would be uh, humility, which would be hitting the nail on the head, <laughs> getting it just right. Now, is pride a special virtue or a general virtue? And uh, for this, it's whenever that question is asked, it's usually in some ways both, and in this case it is as well. So it's a special virtue, it's a special vice in that it's inordinate desire of one's own excellence. So in that way, it's specific. So, you know, if you say, well, how does pride affect you personally? Well, it's it's your inordered, your inordinate, your your pr not properly ordered desires that you are better than you are. So that's that's how it is a special vice, uh, but it's also a general vice um, in that it has uh, influence on all of the sins. Right? It, in some ways, it's it, we call it the mother of all vices, mother or the queen of the, the vices, queen of the all sins, uh, because it is uh, it, it lays at the foundation of all of them. And that way, it's general. It's nearly every sin has some element of uh, pride uh, in it, either leading towards pride or starting from pride. Um, uh, let's see. At, at the heart of it, 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 we go back to the very beginning of Genesis uh, in the... The story of Satan um, uh, is is the is the call. I will not serve. Right, the the, the line from Satan found in the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, I will not serve. Right, this is at the heart of what pride is about. Now, pride is is it a concusable or an irascible fac faculty? Uh, a, Saint Thomas says it is part of the irascible faculties. Uh, it's a proper object of pride is something difficult because uh, you're aiming at an excellence which is beyond you. So in some sense it's unseen for one which leads one to think of the irascible and it's also something since it's dealing with excellence 
it's something difficult. So it's it's uh it's leaning towards irascible. Something concusable is something that's kind of easy and pleasurable. So eating that piece of cake, uh, having a big piece of meat, um, having a drink of alcohol, right? This is all easy. You know, you know, it doesn't take much work to get there. Um, something like being uh, pride, uh, aiming at that excellence that's beyond you, uh, that's, that's different, right? <laughs> that's not easy. Um, and it can be irascible in two ways. Uh, one is the sensitive appetite, which is this, you know, the, these feelings and the desires of thinking yourself better than you really are. But then part of it is an intellectual appetite where you're thinking that you are better than you are. It's not just feeling that you're better than you are, but an act of the will that you are acting as if you are better than you are. And this is how it ties in with the, the demons, right? How it affects even Satan himself uh, with, with the sin of pride is because uh, uh, the demons get to have an intellectual appetite. So uh, they don't have sensitive appetites, but they have an intellectual appetite. So we share with the demons in uh, having a disordered intellectual appetite towards pride, um, which is the act of the will, right? The angels have a singular act of the will. In Article 4, we're moving right along. There are four species uh, of pride. Uh, it has four parts. Uh, first, we can look at it in itself, uh, which we've already really covered this definition, and St. Thomas repeats it a lot too, having uh, a greater good than one deserves, right? Thinking oneself self much better than one is, right? Uh, uh, you, know, you think that you're the best basketball player that's ever lived, or you know, maybe a good example would be like these American Idol singers. They think that they are an amazing singer and they get up there and they get laughed off the stage, right? You, you think that you are much better than you actually are. That's pride in itself. Uh, the next is in the form of the cause, uh, which uh, you're unaware of where the goodness within you comes from. Um, uh, so if you think that your goodness co is coming from you directly uh, and not from God, right? Maybe you've been given a great uh, an ability or a, a great virtue, uh, a great skill, um, and you don't recognize uh, that it came from God, then you have pride in your cause because you think it came from you when it came from God. It's very similar to the second one where you think that you have earned it, right? You, it's like uh, a lot of examples of this, but you know what? Somebody, you know, sometimes people get lucky in business. They get lucky in one way or another, and they think that they are brilliant business people. But it just happened to be the right place at the right time. You know, the housing market is a bit like that, right? If anyone lived through the last housing bubble like, there was a time that no matter what you bought you were going to make a lot of money and then when it crashed no matter what you did you were going to lose a lot of money right so if you think oh this is all my you know my my skill well you're thinking a little bit too high of yourself <laughs> you know some of this has nothing to do with you you know the similar things happen with presidents too where it's like well what did this president do in the three years well, well in some ways pre presidents aren't they're really not that responsible for the economy. The <laughs> what people do on a daily basis is much more important than what the president does, right? So, you know, the taking credit for, or for that which you don't really deserve would be that, that cause of pride. The next would be the manner. Um, so claiming that one possesses greater goods than another, right? So if, if it's not just feeling it, but, you know, you're... You're, you're comparing yourself to other people and you think that you're greater than that person or that person, uh, you know, and then you have in your that and you've gotten to that position based on your own merits, um, you know, thinking that you're better than other people. That's that manner of pride. And lastly, uh, 
when a man despises others and wishes to be singularly conspicuous. That's a wonderful line. Um, you know, when you want to be recognized for uh, whatever good it is, you know, you know, with kind of the Harry Potter mentality, like you have younger people thinking, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I had special powers? Like, you know, maybe some people are getting this way when it, when you, with psychics and stuff like this. You know, I really, in a, you know, I pick up on these things, right? I, I have this sensitive appetite, you know, a sensitive sense about me where I can just read, you know, read the future. I can read people's things, you know. I, I'm a motive, you know, in some ways, right? The, People, everybody wants to be special, right? <laughs> we have a lot of problems within our culture now because people's overwhelming desire to be conspicuous, conspicuously singular, right? Uh, that they themselves are unique, that old-fashioned, I'm not like other girls or I'm not like other guys, right? Well, you might be more like them than you realize, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, everybody thinks that they're a unique individual, particularly teenagers, right? They're rebelling because they're not like everyone else, except everybody else also feels like they're not like everybody else. So <laughs> um, in some ways, people are correct and incorrect. Um, is pride a mortal sin? And uh uh, yes, it is, in fact, the greatest of all sins, um, which is ironic that it's under the topic of temperance, which in some ways is the lesser of many of the sins. Uh, but within temperance is pri the, the contrary, which is pride, which is a mortal sin. And why is it mortal and, and even maybe the, the worst sin? Well, because pride lacks subjugation to God, right? If you recall from the last one, it's not recognizing that God is doing anything good with you. You think that you are doing it all on your own, right? You, you, you don't need to submit yourself to anyone. If you recall back to humility too, that uh, one of the parts of humility is that you subject yourself to God and serve your brothers and sisters. That's what humility is all about. Here, uh, a lack of humility is I'm not willing to s subjugate myself to anyone. Well, the, that proverbial, I will not serve. Um, well, that's at the, the very heart of the, the sin of Satan himself, right? <laughs> I will not serve. Um, uh, so all pride, uh, all, pr all of pride is found in man not being in some way subject to God and his rule, the very nature of mortal sin. That's almost mortal sin's definition. And it's really the basis of all sin. All sin is, I will not subject myself to God and his law, right? Whatever it is, whether it's murder, whether it's gluttony, it's I will not subject myself to the reason from which God has given us. I will not submit myself to God's nature. I will not submit myself to the divine law, right? I will not submit Right. This is the very heart of pride, which is why it affects all of the, the vices. Um, uh, we just basically said this, but it's the most grievous sin because uh, it denotes a simple, uh, it, it av a simple aversion to God. It just, on its face, it says, I will, not, I will not be ruled. I will not submit. I will not be subjected, not even to God. Um, while other sins are done through ignorance or weakness or some of the pursuit, pride is, is direct. Pride is directly uh, an offense. Um, you know, some things are to the degree. What degree are they off? Pride, though, is on its face just directly a, a, a hatred towards God, as St. Thomas says, uh, by its genius, right, by its by its very nature, by its category, is categorically opposed to God. Uh, now, uh, pride is the first sin, right? It's the first and the last, right? The, the first thing uh, in every genus is that which is essential, uh, and uh, it's the first sin, it's the sin of Adam uh, and Eve. It's uh, the sin of Satan, right? Th these are all coming from that idea of I will not 
submit uh, in its an aversion to God uh, in, on its face, um, and it's the beginning of all all other sins. So any other sin is a rejection of God and His law. It's a rejection against nature. I've already said this. <laughs> uh, any kind of sin is uh, or can arise from pride. Now the question is, is pride a capital vice? And usually a capital vice, I just said this a couple of questions ago, whenever it's a capital vice, it's usually followed with then a question of, well, what are the daughters of that vice? Uh, in this case, you know, as soon as I say that, the next time we come to a capital vice, um, the next question is not, are there daughters? But uh, there's a special reason for that here. Uh, Pride is a capital vice, meaning it is uh, it gives for it gives uh, it gives it gives forth uh, offspring. All right, it it leads to other uh, other uh, vices. So it's like a mother who give who gives birth to daughters, uh, or in terms of capital, right? It's the center and of which it runs other towns and cities. But like, think of a capital of the country, a capital of the state. You know, it 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 affects others, right? It it, it runs others. Um, so, is pride a capital vice? I think very clearly it is a capital vice. If it's the first sin, it's the one that directs a lot of sins. You know, other sins combined with pride. Are, are great sins, mortal sins. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a special sin in that regard. Uh, but why it doesn't have any daughters? Why, why is the next slide not filled with a list of six daughters of pride or something like that? And St. Thomas says the reason why is because, because it's also a general sin, because it's a general vice. Um, so what are its daughters? all the others right it's the queen it's the mother of all vices according to saint gregory because it's the mother of all vices then wh what are its daughters all the other sins right <laughs> so we're not going to list them because it's all of them right so from that first statement i will not serve i will not submit i will not be subjected to god i will not be subjected to anyone i will not serve right comes all the other sins um, in that way it is the capital vice right it's the, the mother of all right the queen of all as st. Gregory points out okay uh, so in conclusion we'll run through the, the eight again uh, pride is a sin right I, I think that's quite clear at this point um, it is a special sin in that it works particularly within yourself to make you feel as if you are better than you really are uh, right, that you are, you have achieved excellence when you have not. Um, it is irasc it's from the irascible appetite because it is somewhat difficult. It's challenging. It's not really seen. Uh, it's not like eating a piece of cake. This is a more difficult thing. Um, pride has four uh, species. Right, it's matter itself. It's causes. We've already covered that. Um, Pride is a mortal sin. Quite clearly, it's a mortal sin because it's directly opposed to God and his law. It, Saint Thomas, Saint Thomas even calls it hatred towards God, right? An aversion towards God. Uh, pride is the most grievous sin, and it causes all the other sins, right? It, it's at least the mother of other sins. And other sins, the, uh, vices, that, you know, they, they work with pride, right? A lot of the great virtues are virtues you know, of itself, like generosity, which is good. Then you have generosity mixed with charity, and you have a great good, right? You, you mix any virtue with charity, and you end up with something amazing, right? So th similarly here, take any vice and add pride to it, and you got, you know, clearly mortal sin, <laughs> right? <laughs> and have, a, have even the smallest sin, add pride to it, and now it's a mortal sin. Um, and pride is a capital vice in that it often, uh, as the mother of all sins, queen of all sins, it it is uh, it has daughters everywhere, right? It <laughs> has many daughters. Uh, it's too numerous to even uh, number. Uh, 
So next we will be getting into the sins of Adam and Eve, and we have three, que three questions dedicated to that since they uh, originate out of pride. It's under this section of pride and a lack of humility. Okay. Mm -hmm.